Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Max Thrust RC. Now for any of those who saw my last video doing a review on the uh, Estes uh, Red Rider, you remember I mentioned the uh, Booster 55 which you could get for it. Well, I have to be honest, curiosity got the better of me. So uh, I couldn't help but uh, go on the internet and uh, find me one of these boosters. Uh, so obviously that changes the rocket into a uh, two-stage configuration as two or three rockets which are uh, compatible, almost ready to fly with this booster and the Red Rider is one of them. And if you haven't seen my Estes Red Rider review then uh, do please go onto my channel and uh, check that out. So this is what uh, what I got was the uh, obviously booster 55. Um, I also uh, got some D12 zeros, which you can see here. Uh, so those will be the uh, primary stage motors. As you can see, they just go bang and uh, ignite the next stage. D12 zero means there's no delay. Um, so as soon as they burn out, they will ignite these. Um, now I thought, well, you know, go big or go home. So we're not messing around. We're not going with any Bs. We're going straight into some uh, some C65s. Uh, so it'll be one D12 zero staging to a, uh, a C65, which we have here. Uh, so it should be uh, pretty good. Um, I reckon realistically, probably about ooh, 11, 1200 feet, probably more like 1100 feet. Single stage, it was doing about 470. So quite a dramatic increase in altitude. Uh, so that should be pretty good to watch. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, open this box up and see what's inside. So here we are, I've got everything out of the package. It's the first time I've ever uh, looked in the box. I haven't even looked at the instructions yet. Um, so looking at it, we've got obviously the instructions here, uh, got a nozzle closure there and some kind of adapter, perhaps uh, looks like a, a nozzle closure kind of interstage as well. Um, this is the main uh, tube, which obviously you slot one of the uh, fins into the gaps here, much like uh, the Red Rider build. And as you can see in there, that's where the motor will go, that's where the D motor will go. And then uh, there's a, sort of a, a, a collar here, and then uh, another sort of uh, stage here, which looks like it sort of funnels the ejection charge into the uh, motor of the uh, sustainer. To keep it going. Obviously I've done a uh, high powered uh, two stage launch with uh, Quantum Leap uh, which again is another video you can check out on my channel. I'll put the uh, link below to that one because it is uh, fairly spectacular. Uh, so I'll have a look at the instructions. I'll put this all together and uh, show you what I thought. Okay folks so that took about two minutes and uh, pretty much as I thought I've put the uh, instructions here uh, just for reference. Um, so I built the booster stage literally just uh, put the fins on uh, as you can see there uh, and then I put the uh, the motor retainer screwed on the back there so that's uh, fairly straightforward as you can see it just comes off and that goes back on again, nice and simple and straightforward. Um, so the way that that actually attaches, uh, as you can see in here, you are supposed to take the standard engine uh, retaining uh, motor mount retainer job off, <laughs> and uh, and then you put in your sustainer motor. So in this case, it'll be a C65. And then you uh, replace your standard motor retainer on the rocket with uh, this. Um, and then uh, obviously after you've done that, you can then put the uh, booster onto the bottom of the rocket for a completed assembly, as you can see there. So then this effectively will be uh, pointing downwards and sort of on there. And as you can see, it rests just in the top here. So it uh, yeah, all fits together quite nicely. and channels the uh, ejection from the D120 into your sustainer motor so uh, so it ignites reliably. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get Red Rider and then uh, we'll sort of put it together bit by bit and uh, yeah we can have a look at how it all, uh, all fits. Lovely. Right okay so here we go I've got Red Rider out. Uh, I've also managed to get uh, 
C65, uh, which you can see right here. So that's going to be the sustainer motor that we use. And uh, don't laugh, but I'm going to try and do this on camera for you guys. Obviously, this is the first time I put this together as well. So uh, what we do is take the standard motor retainer off, which uh, we can put down there for now. We take our C65 and then we pop it up the uh, rear end of the rocket like so and then it's uh, clicked into place. Uh, after that we use the uh, alternate sort of interstage coupler uh, motor retainer which then just screws on the back here like so. We'll do that. Screw, 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 make sure it's nice and tight, which it is. And then what you would do is put your uh, D motor in there and then pop this uh, obviously on here. So there you go. Obviously you would try and line the fins up as, as nicely as possible and uh, also get the rocket orientated uh, correctly. I told you this is going to be awkward. <laughs> so there you go. That is what it looks like. So that's pretty cool, I think. Quite a uh, an interesting looking silhouette. Uh, so that should really make it uh, punch through the sky. And on that topic, I reckon we should load a D12 up in the uh, booster here and go take it out and see what it can do. Oh, okay, folks, here you can see we're out at the uh, field. She's all rigged up and ready to go. Uh, we've got the uh, booster at the bottom there connected to uh, the Estes Red Rider. The altimeter 2 is in as well, so we should be able to get some decent data for this launch. So, why don't I uh, step back and send her on her way. So here we go, a two-stage launch of the Estes Red Rider D120 to C65, launching in five, four, three, two, one, Okay, I see the booster, I see the parachute, the booster is down, that should be easy enough to find. And excuse me folks, I'm just going to put my launch controller down, so there is the rocket right up there. I don't know how well you can see it, I'm trying to zoom in. Uh, it's quite a uh, windless day today, but as you can see at altitude it's still drifting quite a lot. Uh, let's zoom back out a little bit more be more of a chance apologies if you're not quite seeing this i have to be honest i was expecting the wind to be a little more southerly than it is but it's still looking okay let's see hopefully you can see that it might be a bit blurry uh, like i say it's, it's always a bit awkward at these ranges because the, the camera does struggle to pick these sorts of things up uh, so what i might do is keep a very good eye on it and hope you can see it. It went really nicely, it's just drifting away. Hopefully it comes back down fairly reasonably. And let's have a look, how's she looking? Hmm, I can say I was expecting it to be a lot more southerly than that. Yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. Otherwise, there she is. Okay, still got it, still got it, still got it. Yeah, I was expecting that to be a lot more southerly. Might be in the field over, you can still just see it twinkling. There is some trees over there. Oh, it's gone a long way. Hmm, let's see. Okay folks, so uh, that's the first bit. Here is the uh, booster and where it landed. Because say we now just got to uh, go and see if we can find the rocket, which is probably going to be uh, a bit more of a challenge, but fingers crossed. 
Okay, guys, uh, you're not going to believe this. So it's about four hours after the launch. Uh, I went back home. I had a damn good look around the trees, etc., etc., etc. So I thought, well, I'll go back home. Now have a look at the launch footage and see what I can see. Uh, went back, looked at that, and then thought, oh, hang on a second. Maybe it's gone over the trees into a small gap. So I jumped in the car, drove out, and you'll never guess what I found. Look at that. So let's go and have a look at it. Okay guys, so uh, yeah, this is where she landed, so those are the trees that I thought it ended up in, but yes, after having looked at the video back at home, it's actually finished here. So here we go, this is where she lies, uh, here is the parachute, uh, if I take this off, that's the only thing I can't find, is it looks as if the nose cone has actually gone. Uh, which is a little random, so I might have a look at that. But uh, here's the actual rocket, and uh, you can see the motor up the back there. Uh, let's uh, see if we can find the nose cone. If not, uh, we'll take it back to base. So here is proof, if nothing else, that miracles do happen. Uh, I went into the other field, which is actually about, ooh, a good one third to half a mile away from where the rocket actually uh, landed uh, to see if I could find the nose cone and the altimeter and uh, as you can see there it is in the field and uh, there's the altimeter down there I'm assuming I'm going to turn this over and see a blank screen because it should have turned itself off and also it didn't have that much battery anyway uh, so let's press the button and, uh, and see if it says anything uh, oh it does it turns on so what have we got 1,243 feet, 165 miles an hour. So there you go. So all I've got to do is uh, put this nose cone back on and uh, we're good to go again, except for that won't be happening. <laughs> I shall go back to base and uh, I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, folks, so here we are back at base. Um, I've managed to put everything back together again so the nose cone's reattached and uh, it's all good. Uh, here is the burnt out uh, D12, as you can see in here, uh, and it's all in one piece, which is great. I obviously got the data back from the Altimeter 2. I did download it all and uh, put it into the sheet, but it's not really designed for two-stage profile, so some of it isn't that accurate. What I can tell you uh, is obviously 1,243 feet, as you've seen, and 165 miles an hour, which you've seen, which I think might be a little low, but it could be about right. Certainly a uh, ballpark figure. Uh, ejection altitude 1,171 feet, so uh, only losing uh, about 80 feet uh, before the parachute came out, which again is pretty nice. The rest of it though is all a little bit funny because uh, obviously it was attached to the nose cone, um, so when that fell off, uh, well it's got a descent speed of 28 miles an hour, I'm surprised. It's not more uh, than that to be honest. So yeah, um, main information though we, we did get. What about the actual Booster 55 itself then? Well, I think it's designed really nicely, so easy to put together. You literally, as you saw, just pop it on the uh, bottom there. You'll see I've got some masking tape on the bottom as it is a little loose and I have seen some videos with these and you can see them rocking around. So I just put some masking tape on the bottom just to help keep it really in place, stop it waving around so that the uh, thrust vector wasn't going all over the place. And uh, yeah, it seemed to work very nicely because we had a good straight flight, stayed on uh, beautifully well as well. Uh, build quality, as I've already shown you, absolutely nothing wrong with it. All completely sturdy, all together. Uh, nothing uh, to complain about on that front. Flight characteristics, yeah, providing you put that masking tape on the bottom, then yeah, you'll get a great flight out of it. Make sure that the uh, fins are aligned as well, obviously. And uh, as you see, it will fly absolutely perfectly. Durability, well, it's a tumble recovery. So you see it's sort of spiraling down like that out of the sky and yeah, landed in the grass. I mean, it was quite long grass. So obviously it was quite a soft surface for it to land on. Hard surfaces might be different, but there's absolutely no chips or gouges or anything out of it whatsoever. So uh, yeah, very good from that perspective. Recommendation, well, I would recommend it. It's great fun, providing um, you've got a really nice day, you need blue sky so you can see the rocket and the booster uh, tumbling down. And uh, obviously very, very light winds. I had light winds today. I mean, some of the lights have been for a while, to be honest, and it still went miles. So you need a lot of space and ideally uh, somebody else uh, as well. So uh, someone can keep an eye 
on the uh, booster and, and someone else can keep an eye on the sustainer. The only slight recommendation I'd have for Estes on this is black, really guys. <laughs> black for something that you're going to be looking in a field for so uh, perhaps a different color on that maybe uh, maybe putting some like high vis neon tape on it or, or something for, for those of you who are interested in getting it so it makes uh, recovery easier because it did take about 10 minutes to find it um, or maybe if they made it white so it's a bit you know it's not right in your face but at least you can see it a bit better so that's the only uh, only thing I would recommend uh, to be changed on that maybe put some like I say high-vis tape on it. Other than that, it's great. Obviously, a bit of a shame that the shock cord failed. I did do a little bit of fault finding when I got back home. I thought maybe it was one of the knots. It wasn't at all. It was just purely and simply the fact that uh, this little edge here uh, has snapped. So when the nose cone came off, the tension on it was too much and it snapped. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't foresee that. The shock cord was in good condition when I put it in the rocket. It's just one of those things. So obviously I'm missing that length of shock cord from the rocket now, but that's uh, no big deal. Uh, it should still be absolutely fine. Obviously the chances of it snapping again with uh, that missing are now slightly increased, but like I say, it should still be absolutely fine. And the rocket is good uh, to fly again. So <laughs> bonus. <laughs> So that's it really, those are my thoughts on the Booster 55, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and the like button as well, because it really does help me out. And I'll see you again next time on Max Thrust RC for another bit of fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys.